Hello students, I am Dr. Rovia from the Department of Biotechnology, School of Bio and Chemical Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. In the previous video, we looked into the techniques that is protein techniques that can be used to visualize a protein. Where here we will look into a genomic method where we will do total RNA isolation and look for the presence of RNA using agarose gel electrophoresis. So how do you obtain the total RNA? We need to lyse the cells and the lysing can be different for different sources. If it is a plant source, it needs more methods whereas when it is a cell culture, the cells are very uh, delicate and it is very much easier to isolate RNA from a mammalian cell culture. So depending on the sample, RNA isolation is different but uh, I am going to show you a gold standard method where we can use trizole. The trizole reagent can be used directly where once we have lysed the cells, the cells can be added with trizole or when it comes to a cell culture or a, we can directly add trizole and get the cells out of an adherent flask or a suspension flask. Now the cells are suspended in trizole, the trizole suspension can be stored in minus 80 for a longer time, even for a year it is stable, whereas when it is used for sooner we can remove it, thaw it immediately and then we can even dilute the trizole suspension to ensure that uh, there is E much easier method can be used to isolate RNA. So once we get the trizole suspension, it is thawed to the room temperature and chloroform is added in the ratio of 2 is to 1. In the ratio of 2 is to 1, we have to add trizole and then chloroform. Then we, when we mix it, we get a two layer separation. The once the layer is separated, we can even ensure by centrifuging it to come to obtain a clear surface. So the number step 1 is homogenization where the cells are now lysed. Then uh, post lysing we have to do phase separation where there is separation of aqueous phase and organic phase. Then the RNA has to get precipitated out of the sample. Now the RNA is washed to ensure there is lesser impurity and then we can re-dissolve the RNA in either TE buffer or even in sterile water. Since RNA is not that stable, the RNA is dissolved in TE buffer and then ensured it is frozen and every time when we use, we have to freeze thaw such that we have to do aliquots of this RNA sample and once the aliquots are kept in minus 80, each aliquot can be taken for ensuring that there is no loss of RNA, there is no degradation and there is use of all the samples at a particular experiment. So here we have any source of sample and then it can be go, uh, went to the homogenization. So here we can see the two phase separation. Here it is aqueous phase and the organic phase. In the organic phase, the entire nucleic acid content will be present. Now we can do the extraction or precipitation so that the precipitation can be done using isopropanol. Now the addition of isopropanol will precipitate the nucleic acid content. So the RNA will get pelleted out with high speed centrifugation for 10,000 RPM at 4 degrees Celsius. And post pelleting out the sample, we can do the resuspension, remove the excess supernatant uh, completely and ensure there is no water droplet present in it, air dry for some time and then do the resuspension. The resuspension can be in water or TE buffer. This is how it looks like. It has a base phase where it, it the lysed sample contains and in the mid we can see a precipitate and above it there is organic phase. So here we can say the organic phase contains the RNA. So once you get the organic phase from that we have to do the precipitation. The organic phase is removed out and then it is added with equal volume of isopropanol and post addition of it we can even incubate it for 5 to 10 minutes on ice. Whatever the step is, all the step must be uh, done only on ice to ensure there is no degradation of the macromolecule. So here we have to ensure there is equal volume of isopropanol added and then it can be centrifuged at very, very high speed like 10,000 RPM for 20 minutes at 4 degrees Celsius. To perform this we need a cooling centrifuge. Then post centrifugation we can see a visible a fine pellet. This pellet can be resuspended. So to check whether our total RNA is intact and there is no degradation we have to perform agarose gel electrophoresis. This method is a very simple method where we use agarose gel and the agarose gel can be casted so that the nucleic acid content can be run very easily using this method. So agarose is a 
form of seaweed and it is uh, like linear polymer of sugar molecules. So when it is heated in water, it forms a flexible mixture of agarose and when, when, when the temperature gets cooled down, it forms a jelly matrix. Since DNA contains negatively charged, so the negative charged can be run on a gel where the negative charge moves towards the positive charge. So this mobility will also be dependent on the molecular weight of the protein and the charge that is applied on it. So this is the agarose gel electrophoresis apparatus where we can see negative cord is uh, connected and the positive cord is connected. The sample is loaded towards the negative side and here we have bromophenol blue added to it that such that it acts as an indicator. And now the sample is loaded and there is shift of the fragments. Here we can see many DNA fragments that are loaded together on the gel and once the gel is run for 3 fourth and we can switch off it and the gel can be taken out and can be viewed under a gel dock machine. In the gel dock machine we have to look under UV, how it can be visualized. Here the band can be visualized and the method here is ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide reagent is, can, is used to the DNA where it gets intercalated to the DNA such that it fluoresces under UV. So the ethidium bromide acts as an intercalating agent and binds to the DNA and ensures we can, it, the bands can be visualized under UV light. So here we can see three RNAs. In case here it is 28S, 18S and 5.8S. So this is the total RNA of a bacteria. We can say we can say it's a bacteria or even a mammalian cell culture. We can get all the three types of RNA. So we have to get three bands and ensure there is the, the three bands are intact and the, the shift, the pathway that contains a bright background that is mRNA where the mRNA will look like a sheath whereas the rRNA will look like a band, intact band can be observed. So this is how we have to visualize an RNA and in the next uh, class we can see how we can amplify these RNA bands and what is the method used for it. Thank you.